folks. It's Laura with Rain Tree Nursery. And today we get a chance to talk about the most widely grown tree fruit in the entire world, the fabulous apple. Apple has been a foundation of homesteads, of countries for hundreds of years. In fact, there is research that shows there are between 7,500 and 11,000 different varieties of apples that are grown all over the world, mostly in temperate climates, but there are some that have chill hours of as little as 150. You could grow apples in the Bahamas if you wanted to. Because apples are so widely bred, there has been a tremendous amount of differentiation that has happened in the size of apple trees. This tree right here is a, what's called a standard apple tree. It's 25 to 30 feet tall and about 25 feet wide. It is the largest of all of the apple trees. Then there are semi-dwarf trees that are about half the size of this, will grow to about 17 feet tall and about 12 feet wide at maturity. Then we have dwarf apple trees that grow about 10 or 12 feet tall and maybe eight feet wide at maturity. Then we have mini dwarf apple trees that only get about five feet tall at maturity and about five to six feet wide. So they're actually wider than they are tall. And last but not least, there are columnar apples that are one big long branch with little tiny branchy stubs that come off of it. They can be as tall as eight feet tall, but no wider than about two and a half feet. Now apple pollination can be a little bit complex. Most apples need a different variety as a pollinizing partner. That part is simple. Their partner needs to be blooming at the same time that they are blooming. So they need to be in compatible bloom groups. There are five different bloom groups for apples and we have a chart on our website in the growing guide for the apple category that will show you which varieties belong in which bloom categories. In addition to knowing your tree's bloom categories, there are two exceptions to remember when it comes to pollinization in apples. The first one is a class of apples known as triploids. These are apples that don't produce any pollen at all. So although they need pollen to set fruit, they do not give pollen to another tree. That makes them special. And those triploids are also noted on the bloom category chart in the growing guide. The second exception is self fertile apples. There are a few apples that are considered self fertile in certain regions. The queen cox apple, for example, for us here in the Pacific Northwest, is a reliably self fertile apple. You should check with your county agricultural extension office to confirm which varieties are considered self fruitful in your region. And last but not least, let's talk for a moment about chill hours because people love to grow apples all over the United States and some people live in very warm areas. If you are one of those folks that lives in a warm area and still wants to grow apples, again, check with your county agricultural extension office and find out how many chill hours your location will experience each year. Most apples need uh, approximately six to 800 chill hours in order to bloom and fruit successfully. Although there are some varieties that can, that can bloom and fruit successfully down to 150 chill hours. So it's important to make sure that you know how your region performs. Modern apples are widely adapted and can be grown in almost all soil conditions but the one thing they all do need 
is they would prefer to be growing in full sun. Another great thing about apples is because there are so many different kinds of rootstocks, you can grow them in pots. The columners, the mini dwarves, and even the dwarf apples are very successfully grown in large pots. A half whiskey barrel, which is 25 gallons, would be a perfect size for any of those trees. Apples are one of the fabulous fruits that will ripen over a very long time. We have the yellow transparent and the gravenstein that start ripening in the middle of August. And some of our wonderful cider varieties aren't ripe until November. It's incredible how long you can go when you're staggering your plantings to give yourself ripe apples all late summer and deep into the fall. When it comes to getting your apple trees established, a good rule of thumb is to water the tree once a week, 10 gallons at a time, unless it is over 80 degrees, at which time you wanna water twice a week, 10 gallons at a time. Now, semi-dwarf and standard trees have deep enough roots that they will just go ahead and dig for water on their own after that initial two year settling in period. However, anything in a pot and any of the smaller apple trees that are put in the ground, the columners, the mini dwarves, and the dwarf trees will need to be watered at least once a week for the rest of their natural lives when it's over 80 degrees. So think about that when you're thinking about the placement of your smaller apple trees. Apple trees don't need a lot of extra fertility. It's one of the reasons why they are such a fantastic workhorse. If your tree is looking a little bit peaked, you can always apply a little bit of fish fertilizer in a liquid form around the drip line of the tree. You can also add compost or well-rotted manure, and you should when you plant the tree as well. I know it sounds like a lot of information, but the bottom line is apples are really quite simple to grow and so very satisfying. Thanks for joining us from Rain Tree Nursery. We will see you next time. Happy growing. <laughs>